All right, we are all about that brap. Welcome back to the channel. I have a set of beautiful rotors that have just been side cut, and this is probably one of my favorite modifications to do to rotors that's going to uh, help with reliability and performance. It doesn't matter whether you're running more boost or you're just trying to achieve higher RPM. This is just one of those beneficial steps that um, not only I rely on in my personal race motors, but I highly recommend to performance customers. And um, it's been around for probably the existence of racing rotaries. So we're gonna get right into it. What we're talking about is side cutting the rotors or tip clearancing. Um, there's a couple ways it can be explained or described, but the principle is to narrow the rotor, primarily at the tips, to allow the rotor to have more side-to-side -side float at high RPM, where you get shaft deflection, um, and or under boost, uh, where you'll actually get rotor wobble deflection. Um, by no means does this rotor stay perfectly uh, upright in between its side plate rotor housing sandwich. This rotor is on a tricoidal spin um, that's got pressure and exhaust and explosion happening. Um, so if you're familiar with rotaries, you can actually see this uh, wear characteristic or this rotational pattern in tip and side housing wear, bearing wear, gear loading, and overall how the rotor housing and side housings generate wear. There are pressure points and a lot of actual uh, distortional movement or weeble wobble to the rotor. That's why having good oil pressure, um, you know, good straight shafts, a balanced rotating assembly, all of these things go together to achieve high performance and reliability. But at the root of it, one of the more inexpensive things to have a professional rotary shop do and I don't really recommend doing it at home, even though it seems simple. It's a good way to mess up a perfectly good set of rotors if you get it wrong, um, is tip clearancing or side clearancing. And, and this has been around forever. Um, you know, Mazda Factory, Mazda Speed, the IMSA cars, the Le Mans cars, um, the, the Mazda Formula cars, uh, the old IMSA GTU cars, everything we build for SCCA, NASA, Time Attack, road race, drifting, drag racing, um, almost unless it's a stock motor, they're getting some type of, of side rotor work or tip work done. A lot of the times you'll also see lightning done or face lightning, pocket lightning. Um, but, but overall, I think the tip clearancing is a little more crucial than the lightning. They're a great package together. But if I had to choose one or the other, getting your, your tips clearance or the rotor side faces cut down a little bit um, and getting your assembly balanced really, I think, is going to help with lifespan, reliability, and performance goals more so than just lightning. Um, but again, great package altogether. So getting into some of the do's and don'ts. Um, I think generally when people think about rotors, they just think they're going to cut the faces down flat on both sides and they're going to go on their happy way. That's actually incorrect. Um, it can cause the oil seals to not seat right. There's actually a theory to how these rotors are from the factory and then how they're cut down within those factory specs. So one thing to note is this oil control ring area. This We call this the land or the gear land. This is actually slightly higher than the rotor face. It's always been that way. It's meant to be that way. You're you're riding on your oil control rings, your gear. These are specific tolerance places. Um, and so therefore this step from your oil control rings and gear land, oil control ring land down to the tip is part of your clearance. This protrusion has to be a little greater than your tip. Otherwise you're not actually gaining tip clearance. You're taking your tip and making it closer to the oil control ring land if you were to just face this thing totally flat, which would be a negative. It wouldn't even be the right principle. Um, and a lot of the times when people just sand them down at home, you know, flatten the whole face, um, you know, they think they're getting a performance gain, but what they're actually doing is they're allowing their tip to get closer to their oil control ring land, which really allows the rotor to wobble over easier and make tip contact. So not the benefit you want. What you want 
is you want more tip clearance in total or a reduction of width while still maintaining the proper offset of oil control ring to tip height. And if you go into all of your factory rotors, it's not something that I think is talked about in the manuals, but if you start to measure almost every generation of rotor that's out there, whether it be 12A, RX8, FD, FC, it doesn't really matter. Generally, you're dealing with about three thousandths of an inch to five thousandths of an inch difference in your oil control ring land to your tip. So my kind of go-to spec, whenever I'm squaring up a set of rotors, because they're not necessarily square from the factory, um, they can easily be a thousandths or two thousandths difference from each other, even as a factory pair. So we generally go for a factory offset of right around five thousandths of an inch while narrowing the rotor to the specifications of the build. And I'm going to leave those specs out right now. Uh, maybe we can get into that into a different video, but those specs vary how much you're going to narrow the rotor based on what type of engine build it is. And that's where the recipe, the chicken noodle soup, how much salt and pepper really comes into play. The principle is there. We know we need to narrow the tip while leaving our oil control ring land and gear land basically in an offset. Um, and I think if you're into rotaries, you could probably start to play with that. But I do recommend leaving this to the professionals, whether it's done on a CNC, an upright mill, a lathe. Um, it's very important to keep the rotors true, square, um, not to remove too much material, because if you're removing too much, now your exposure to your corner seal, side seal, apex seal is changing. You don't want too much exposure. You just want enough tolerance and, and vice versa. Um, if you're not cutting off enough, then you're not really getting the improvements or if you're doing it wrong by cutting the whole face down, that would also negate the improvement. So I do recommend leaving side clearancing or side cutting or tip clearancing to professional rotary shops. Send it into us, KMR, Mazda Tricks, Racing Beat. There, there's shops all around the country that offer this. I do recommend also getting the rotating assembly balanced. They go hand in hand. If you're removing material from the rotors, that's gonna change your balance. If the motor's apart, you're building a performance build, send it into KMR, send it into Mazda Tricks. We'll balance everything up. You'll have a nice 10,000 RPM package after some proper tip clearancing, balancing, and setup. So I hope that um, adds some clarity and some rotor knowledge and information to what is actually being done with rotors and where the performance gains come in. Because I think uh, this is one of those categories where it's easy to talk about it and you go, okay, I know I need to, to clearance the tips, um, but that doesn't mean cut the whole face of the rotor down. Um, and that also means application wise, um, road race, drifting, drag racing, performance, boosted and naturally aspirated, all kind of run within a close range of specs, but there are some different specs. Um, so that's a wrap. Thanks for watching. KMR, rotor tips, clearancing, keep your brap alive. I'm going to go back to work. Thanks a lot.